How's it going? Hope you're having a great day so far. I wanted to share a little bit about how I actually got started with weightlifting. Um, I guess a little bit about my fitness background and kind of where I'm at with that now. I also wanted to share some of the mistakes that I made, or at least like uh, things I wish I would have known or done in hindsight. And to kind of start everything off, I just want to give a brief history of kind of like where I was physically and I think I was like 19 around the time um, I was very very skinny I was like 120 pounds uh, 5 9 5 10 and I kind of dabbled a little bit in like calisthenics just like basic home workouts and stuff like that so like I wasn't I wasn't ever terribly uh, out of shape, but I never was in shape, especially uh, growing up as a kid. And so it's like 19. I was doing calisthenics in my, my parents' basement, and I kind of decided I wanted something a little bit more engaging. So I opted to join a rock climbing gym. And so I started rock climbing, and while rock climbing, I ended up doing that for. Um, the better part of maybe five, six years. Um, currently, I'm not rock climbing as much, but um, every now and then I do go. However, um, during the first couple of years, I ended up sustaining a couple of shoulder injuries. I dislocated my shoulder, um, my right shoulder. I dislocated that one three, two or three times, and then my left one I dislocated once. Um, the right one, I had a prior injury from a high school sport, and... Uh, I guess the the technical medical term I guess is a subluxation because it went back in um, each time. Um, I think that's what it's called, anyways. But um, yeah, so I dislocated my shoulders. Um, thankfully, they all went back in by themselves, and you know I just had a lot of issues with mobility, soreness, uh, swelling, bruising, inflammation, all that sort of all that good stuff. And eventually, I transitioned from rock climbing into combat sports. I got very heavily into kickboxing and jujitsu for about the last year. Um, and doing those, I sustained a lot of minor injuries and somehow with the combat sports, at least in the year or so time, which is not very long, um, that I had, had done those, I didn't sustain any like real major injuries. It was just a lot of minor, um, a lot of minor things. And <clears throat> You know, over time, those things build up. So, kind of came to the conclusion that I needed to strengthen my body all around, just in general, because I was really skinny. Um, I was injury prone, um, especially with jujitsu. I was strong in certain positions, uh, mostly defensive positions, but when it came to being offensive, going on the attack, um, it was horrible because, like, I could never rip open someone else's defense. Um, and a lot of the, I guess, defenses that I used were mostly posture and um, like prevention based. So I would just like defend certain positions, position my body in certain ways and use leverage and physics and stuff like that, as opposed to just like being strong. So um, I got away with that for a long time. But then again, those injuries were building up over time. I had tons of injuries with my feet, um, tons and tons of foot sprains, ankle sprains, toe sprains, um, broken nose, just to name a few, but um, again, just a lot of minor injuries. So then I started kind of thinking that, you know, maybe I should just like start lifting weights. And so I think about um, eight or nine months ago, I got, got myself started into weightlifting and kind of just messed around with um, like nothing too heavy it was just like the basic compound movements um just doing like squat bench um just stuff like that i'm just kind of getting a feel for it and i was just doing really really light weights i'm talking like you know just the bar for uh, for bench maybe like i don't know 95 pounds on squat like literally nothing um too heavy and at the same time i picked up a book called starting strength and I began reading through this book 
and kind of practicing the exercises and things that it um, like mentioned and talked about uh, for the program. And I just repeated a bunch of uh, like volume and I guess mileage work um, for those exercises and different things. So that way I could build up my confidence and be more comfortable with those with those movements. And then once I felt I was ready, I actually went ahead and just started the starting strength program. So the starting strength program um, essentially just consists of three days per week. You're doing main compound lifts and the goal of every single workout is to add weight um, in basically what, using what they call micro plates. So uh, essentially we're just, they're abusing progressive overload um, and beginner new begins in order to, I guess, like muscle growth and development and it's a really effective program for that or at least it was for me so i started the program and i began lifting i was a lot more confident because i had built a fundamental base of my form and form cues and habits and stuff like that um, so i was a lot more comfortable getting under the bar than you know if somebody just started day one and tried lifting heavy off off the bat um, I definitely think that the smartest approach is to pick up some sort of resource, study those um, those lifts and the, that resource, and just kind of get a mental picture of it. At the same time, practice the lifts and like major compounds, but do it with lighter weight. Get a lot of mileage and reps under your belt so you're comfortable. And then from there, move directly into doing the actual program and the work um, that the program um, actually has you do. So I did that, started doing the starting strength program and the first, I don't want to say mistake, but I guess the first pitfall I had um, that came with weightlifting was I severely underestimated um, like nutrition. I was having a really hard time meeting my intake goals and just like eating enough food in order to actually sustain the program, but also recover um, during times of rest. And nutrition is one of those things that you you just cannot neglect. You know, if you go to the gym three, four times a week and you work really hard every time you're trying to add weight to the bar, but you're not fueling your body with what it needs in order to sustain that growth, then obviously you're going to stall out on your on your lifts. Your sets are going to be really hard and grindy. And it's just going to be a terrible time. And I just really underestimated how hard it actually was to just like eat more food, but also eat more protein dense foods. And I am one of those people who always struggle to finish a full meal, but I am like a regular snacker. So I would eat, you know, snacks throughout the day. And then whenever it would come to a like meal time, I would try to load up on proteins and, and calories, but like, I just couldn't do it because, you know, it, it just didn't fit the way that like I, I would eat normally or regularly. So what I ended, ended up doing was I basically found a lot of high protein snacks or protein dense snacks. And I started eating those throughout the day. And then slowly over time, I was getting closer and closer to meeting my intake goals just because I was getting it through snacking, which is, you know, I just used my already pre-existing eating habits and and improved on top of them to, I guess, meet that other habit of getting my intake goals, my protein, um, calories, stuff like that. So for nutrition, definitely kind of take into consideration what kind of person you are when it comes to food and eating um, and find ways to squeeze in protein doing eating the same way that you're already eating and don't try to like force a really drastic change right in the beginning um, these things should happen over time and when you're trying to bulk up gain weight gain strength you you want to do it in a healthy way especially if you're also if you're going in the reverse if you're trying to lose weight you want to go about it in a healthy way and if you are a regular snacker, then, you know, look for ways to get more protein intake through your snacks and, you know, combine that with high protein meals and you'll be, you know, miles ahead of where I was when I first started. The 
last thing I do want to talk about um, was with the, uh, in regards to the program, the book, it right off the bat recommends that you get a couple of things. You get weightlifting shoes, a weightlifting belt, as well as some chalk. And I cannot understate how much of a difference these items make but also how stupid and how stubborn i was in the beginning um just for i i don't know if it's it was like an ego thing i i just like maybe felt like they were kind of like a crutch or something and i just didn't really like understand nor uh, really think that there would be any sort of benefit to these these like different things you could use these tools and I could not have been more wrong. Like, I I feel so dumb having spent a whole 12-week cycle of starting strength not having any of these things when it, literally the program says on day one to have these things. Like, when you're really wanting to get serious results from these types of programs, like, you have to follow the program. You have to follow the protocol. And I just didn't. And so... It got me thinking, you know, we use specific footwear for specific types of activities across the board in like every sport. You've got running shoes, tennis shoes, rock climbing shoes, you have skateboarding shoes, basketball shoes, like there are specific shoes that are designed <clears throat> for these activities. And so like, why wouldn't you have weightlifting shoes? You know, it just makes literally no sense to just not have them. And for the weightlifting belt, once I actually used one, I put one on and used it for the first time, I finally understood that it's not a band-aid fix for a weak core. It gives you something around your trunk in order for you to, when you brace, to, to push against. Like, it adds extra stability, but it doesn't fix a weak core. It just helps solidify good habits and good feedback and also just strengthen your your bracing so you have a rigid back and you don't hurt yourself but also it's just it just helps because a lot of the times when you do these heavy lifts if you're not breathing correctly if you're not bracing correctly you will either guaranteed fail the lift unless it's something very light that you can handle regardless of bracing your core or not or you're gonna hurt yourself and put that belt on I, I i bought a belt i put it on and i used it for my first set ever and it changed the way i looked at these i guess items or this gear completely and that same moment i got online and i ordered my first pair of weightlifting shoes and it, it just changed everything because like if you're trying to squat in tennis shoes, they have like a very compressive sole. And when you put heavy loads or I guess high weight on your back and you go to sink down into a deep squat, those soles compress and they're squishy. Like you, you're, there's room for your, for your ankle and your heel and your your foot to move around you don't have a very stable platform to lift from and so when you get a pair of weightlifting shoes they have a non-compressive sole generally with a raised heel which allows you to get into a deeper squat focus on those quads but also it's just way more stable and i was just so dumb and stubborn in the beginning to just not i guess to just think i was better than, than to use that stuff. And honestly, that was one of the biggest mistakes I think I made as a beginner, but also one of the mistakes that I think a lot of people tend to do, um, tend to make as well when they're starting out, is to just kind of just disregard the, these items, especially if you're going to lift heavy. Um, just bite the bullet, get them. And if you're not, if you're not a believer in, in you know, the assistance with the gear and stuff like that um at least just get a weight belt try it out see what you think they're like 25 bucks maybe at most online and for me it was completely it changed the entire experience 
and then the last recommendation that I want to give to anyone who's trying to start out on their weightlifting journey is to find a program that I guess suits your your goals, but also suits your personality. So for me, starting strength was great because I am I have kind of a minimalistic personality where I, I like I love simplicity and starting strength is just that. It's a very simple program. There's no extra bells and whistles. It basically tells you to do your main compound lifts three days a week, add weight every time, eat eat big to lift big and use you know, the accessories, the weightlifting shoes, the belt and stuff like that, and just follow the program. It's a no BS quick start way to just get into the gym and, and start seeing progress. And that worked really well for me. But for some other people, they don't, they won't want to do compound lifts like that. Like, it'll be really boring to them. And so you've got to find a program that that works for you first and foremost study that program and then when you're ready to hop into that program just stick to it to a t like everything that that book says or everything that that program says just just do it for a while see what works everyone's different and you know once you get more experience under your belt you can start changing you know the exercises the lifts you can change to a new program a new schedule whatever but for the beginning part just find something that works and that is sustainable and works with your personality and just run with it so that was my last recommendation um, for anyone who's getting started with weightlifting um, again as always i just want to say thank you for watching and supporting my videos um, leaving a like leaving a comment subscribing all that sort of good stuff and i love hearing from you guys in the comments anytime you guys share um, like your experiences and stuff like that i always try to respond to those and again i just want to say thank you and i will see you again in the next video